morning, gentlemen. I saw that cat all hunkered up, and I figured I better... We have been chasing that cat for two days and nights, and now you made the whole thing a big waste of time. Oh, I saw the two of you over there. I don't know where you're from, but around here, a man don't come in on another man's kill. Especially if you can't shoot no better than you can. <laughs> well, where I'm from, sir, uh, you don't take on to a feller quite so fierce. Unless, of course, you got no manners. In which case, somebody generally teaches you some. Of course, you being a little older than I am, I reckon I can't even do that. Well, just you forget about my age and put up your fist, because I'm going to teach you who's going to show who's some manners right now! Now, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Stay out of this! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute. Look, that lion's been killing livestock around here. Two days ago, he mauled a young boy pretty bad. This is the first time anyone's had a chance to get a shot at it. That's right. Well, I, I understand why you're mad, and I'm sorry that I spoiled your hunt, but... My name is Moss. Calvin Moss. Howdy. This gentleman here who intends teaching you some manners is Cincinnatus. I'd have had that cat right between the eyes. It hadn't been for you and that... I sort of doubt that. You mean to say you're questioning my marksmanship? <laughs> no, how can I do that? I haven't even seen you shoot. It's just that... Come here. I saw you two back there. And I didn't think you saw that cat. And it was all set to jump. Well, I uh, expect we uh, <clears throat> got a little apologizing to do, Mr... Jones. D-Lo Jones. d -Lo. I owe you some thanks. <laughs> yeah. See, we never even suspected that cat might have had a mate. I told you we should have waited till Daniel got back before we went on a hunt. I know it. Had been for Delo here that well, two of us might have got ourselves killed. This Daniel, this Daniel you're talking about, that wouldn't be Daniel Boone, would it? You know Daniel. <laughs> oh, sir, but I'd sure be proud to meet him sometime. Reckon that can be arranged? All we gotta do is just come back to Boonesboro with Cal and me, and I tell you, you'd be mighty welcome. Why, sure. I'm just going to take you up on that. I was headed for there anyhow. Ooh, plan to settle down there for a spell, huh? Well, uh, that all depends. I might have to leave most any time. But if I stay around, we'll try to get that other cat. Good idea. Hey, hold on till I get my gear, all right? Pack of trade goods I brought from Virginia with me. you, Sergeant. I don't know what this is all about. You're under arrest by order of the governor of Virginia. Afraid you're treeing the wrong cat. Call your men off, Sergeant. The gentleman's telling the truth. My apologies, sir. My scout here, Natuck, saw your approach and made his report. You're not unlike the fugitive we're after. He made an honest mistake. Well, I heard your men a half mile down the trail. I'd have hardly kept coming if I was the man you were after. <laughs> Uh, granted, sir. But perhaps you can appreciate our situation. I'm Lehman Henderson, special officer of His Majesty King George. My name is Boone, Daniel Boone. Ah, Boonesboro. We, uh, we have reason to believe that the fugitive may be en route there. We traced him to Nutter's Fork, but he'd moved on. 
Unfortunately, none of my men have ever seen our quarry. I'm the only one who knows what he looks like. But he's tall, like yourself, and uh, a woodsman. So uh, Natick's mistake is understandable. Again, our apologies. Well, no harm done. What's this fellow wanted for? Murder, Mr. Boone. Murder. If you have any information that could be of assistance to us, if you've seen anybody on the trail. Well, not many strangers find their way to Boonesboro. What is this fellow calling himself? I wouldn't know that, Mr. Boone. But his name is Delo Jones. Delo Jones. <laughs> Way up yonder above the sky, a bluebird lived in a blue jay's eye. Buckeye Jim, you can't go, go even spin, but you can't go. Buckeye Jim. Buckeye Jim. Way down yonder in a wooden trough, an old man died of the whooping cough. Buckeye Jim, you can't go, go even spin, but you can't go. Buckeye Jim. Now, way down yonder in a hollow log, a red bird danced with a green bullfrog. Buckeye Jim, you can't go, go even spin, but you can't go. Buckeye Jim, Buckeye Jim, Buckeye Jim, Buckeye Jim. Hold up now. You folks want to look at my goods, and we got to give them a chance even though they are grown-ups, right? You folks just go ahead, look at the goods. You see anything you like, go ahead and take it, and we'll talk about the price later, all right? Hey, and there's some doodads over there you kids will like, I'll bet you. Hey, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Cincinnati, you've got a good town here, good people. Well, we like to think so, Delo. You didn't tell me you owned a store. I didn't mean to go into competition with you. Well, there's nothing to fret over from the looks of the stuff you got. I ain't seen merchandise like that for, since three winters back. <laughs> I, you're not going to be going to any competition with me. You know, a fellow works up an awful thirst singing like that. Now, if you could find us a mug of ale, I'd be glad to buy. You just go right on in and help yourself. I'm going over to the Boone place now and see if Daniel's got back from Salem yet. Yeah, sir. <laughs> Come on, Israel, let's go. So what I found something, Alice. It's a spinner. Think Paul let me keep it? You go right ahead and keep it. It's all yours. Hey, Cincinnati, since you're going over to the Boone's, mind if I tag along with you? I've been looking forward to meeting him for a long time. Be real glad to have you. I respect uh, Mrs. Boone. I'd like to meet you, too. So why don't you come along? Come on. See, that's some town. Hello, Cincinnatus. Howdy, Becky. I take it uh, Dan ain't back from Salem yet. <laughs> no, he's not. I'm expecting him any time. Was it something important? Oh, nothing special. Uh, Mr. Jones here would like to meet Daniel. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, Delo, uh, this is Rebecca Boone, Daniel's wife. How do you do? My pleasure, ma'am. Won't you come in? Well, uh, Reckon we could set a spell if it won't put you out now. Nonsense. I'm grateful for the company. It gets awfully lonely when Dan's gone. Come along, Israel. Please sit down and make yourselves comfortable. I'll get some cool cider. Will you sing a song for me, d -Lo? I don't know. Your mama might not like that. Oh, she'll like it fine. She don't get to hear music very often. What do you think? Sure. You know, every time we have a dance, what, Becky's apt to be the last one to leave. Just, just listen to the music. What are you going to sing for us? Well, now I know you heard the story about the handsome young soldier and the pretty little girl in Caroline. I ain't heard it. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe that a man could do what he did. Especially with her looking up at him and asking just one question. What was the question, D-Lo? Oh, soldier, soldier, will you marry me with your musket, fife, and drum? 
Now how can I marry such a pretty girl as ye when I got no pants to put on? So off to the tailor she did go as fast as she could run. She bought him a pair of the best that were there, and the soldier put them on. Now soldier, soldier, will you marry me with your musket, fife, and drum? Now how can I marry such a pretty girl as you when I got no boots to put on? So off to the cobbler she did go as fast as she could run. She bought him a pair of the best that were there, and the soldier put them on. Oh soldier, soldier, will you marry me with your musket, fife, and drum? Now how can I marry such a pretty gal as ye, with a wife and a baby at home? Go on, sing another one. Israel, now that isn't very polite. Mr. Jones may be tired. I hope the noise didn't bother you none, ma'am. Oh, of course not. But Israel shouldn't impose on his guests that way. Can Nilo see the supper, Ma? Then maybe he'll play and sing some more for us. I'd be delighted. Will you stay for supper, Mr. Jones? And you too, Cincinnati? Well, I'll be happy to. If it's not causing you too much trouble. Of course not. You help yourselves, and I'll go start preparing supper. I hate to be one to eat and run, but if we're going to get that cat, we better get started. It's almost dark already. I'm sorry, Dan isn't home yet, but you will come again. Oh, you can depend on that. As a matter of fact, I'll leave that old music box just to make sure. Can I come, D'Lo? I don't know. You better stay here and take care of your mama. We might not be back before daylight. Will you sing me another song then? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to sing you a song about that cougar we're going to catch. Be careful, or it might catch you. Oh, got nothing to worry about. Got Cincinnati's to look out for me. <clears throat> Much obliged, Becky. Good night. night. Good night, Cincinnati. He's real nice, ain't he, Ma? Yes, Israel. He's a very nice young man. Think Paul like him? I think you'll like him very much. In fact, in many ways, they're quite a lot alike. Those sure are whoppers, Mr. Jones. I wish I could have been there when you got them. Oh, they're fair size, I reckon. I got an old mama line one time that had cubs bigger than me. Cubs? You never saw the beat. Way up north of here, in a place called Lake Temiskum in Canada. Canada? Pa's talked about that place. It's a far piece. Oh, indeed it is. But he never said anything about there being cats up there that big, though. Well, they're up there. They're up there. I trailed them 90 miles through the snow, regular blizzard. And when I finally run them down, they was wore clean down to an oven. You know that old mama cat? She wasn't any bigger than them right over there. And them cubs, little old bitty kittens. Why, when I draw the bead on them, I said, disgusted, I didn't even shoot. They're probably still wandering around up there. Big as a house. <laughs> well, it looks to me like you've done a right smart job of them hides. Yeah, I don't suppose you'd be a tanner by trade now, would you? I'm afraid not, Cincinnati. But I've done a little bit of everything in my time. What, you you going out again? Well, I should be getting back to the store, but I figured that maybe Becky could use some game for supper. Well, say, I'm through with these hides. Why don't I go out and see if I can scare up a gobbler or two? Well, I don't know. Turkeys have been about as scarce as hen's teeth around here of late, <laughs> so you might have to settle for rabbits. Well, who knows? We might get lucky and, by George, just have a good meal for Mr. Boone when he gets back. Well, I tell you what, I think you'll have better luck over to the Southwest. You think so? Mm -hmm. Well, I I'll jog back that way in a little bit. Oh, it's 
Mr. Jones in Cincinnati. Oh, it looks like we'll have turkey for supper. Can I help fix the Oh, just a minute, young man. You finished that whole chapter. I've done all my lessons. I even went farther, all the way up to where Samson carried off those big gates. Oh, I don't see any writing. I'll do that after a bit, Ma. I promise I won't forget. Well, as long as you remember, writing's just as important as reading. I will, Ma. I promise. Whoa! Ow! I've been jumped by a wild sicarni. Uh, and that's just the way they attack, too, you know. I'll put the kettle on for tea. What's a sicarni? Have you heard of that tribe, Cincinnatus? Well, no, I, I can't say that I have, Israel. Sicarni's a tribe of Indians that live up by Bear Lake in Canada. And you talk about fierce, whoo! Yeah? What do they do? <laughs> Tell you the truth about all they do is fish and hunt snow geese. Good hunters and real good folks, too. I bet they ain't as good as hunters as you and my pa. Well, I wouldn't go so. Isn't that right, Cincinnati? Well, it is true that Dilo is just about one of the finest hunters I ever did meet in my life. As a matter of fact, he's got a special little whistle, Israel, that uh, goes like this. And then the game just parades right in front of him. All he has to do is... Uh, Pull that trigger. Can I go with you next time, Dilo? Maybe I can learn that whistle. Uh, well, um, he, he's a mighty fine whistler, it's true, but uh, he's also a hard worker. So what do you say you and me get out there and clean them birds for supper while we give him a much-needed rest, huh? Tea's ready. I should think you do need a rest. Well, with tracking that cat all night and hunting turkey all day. Any time I can be a service, ma'am, I'm more than happy to do so. Why don't you have a nice cup of hot tea? And I insist on paying you for the material in those curtains. Oh, I've wanted new curtains for so long. Mrs. Boone, after all the fine food and the good company I've had, why, well, I've been more than repaid. <laughs> and besides, I've got a little favor that I want to ask Mr. Boone, providing he gets home soon enough. Oh, it sounds like you're planning on leaving. Yes, ma'am. Maybe I've stayed too long already. You're in some sort of trouble. Yes, ma'am. I don't mean to pry, but would you like to talk about it? I don't know why not. You're going to find out about it sooner or later anyhow. They say I killed a man back in Williamsburg. I didn't do it. But I can't prove that either. And I'm not going to prison. I couldn't spend the rest of my life pent up. I don't know if you understand, but... I think I do. But if you didn't do it... Well, there's no time to go into that either. In my innocence, I mean. Well, I, I like you to believe me. You know, you can't keep on running. Oh, I'm not. I want to stop just as soon as I get to New Orleans. New Orleans? Well, that's over a thousand miles, and, and most of it through hostile Indian country. Well, that, that's a favor that I was going to ask Mr. Boone. I reckon he knows more about Indians than any man alive. And I thought if we got to be good friends, that he might give me a hand. I reckon it's too late for that. Well, I guess I'll be moving on. If I stay around here, I'll just get you in trouble, too. May not be too late, Mr. Jones. Dan's coming now. I surely you can wait to meet him. Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, Dan. Dan. Oh, I'm so glad you're home. I'm glad to be home, too. Was it a bad trip? Oh, not bad. Where's Israel? Oh, he's out back, helping Cincinnati's clean some turkeys for supper. 
turkeys. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me Cincinnatus has turned into a hunter. <laughs> no, not Cincinnatus. A new friend of his, someone you haven't met. Dilo? Dilo? That's his name. Dilo, I want you to meet my husband, Dilo Jones. Mr. Boone, I've looked forward to this meeting for a long time. Becky, could I have a word with you alone, please? Excuse us, Mr. Jones. I'd like it if, you, if you'd call me D-Lo. D-Lo? Dan, what's wrong with you? I've never seen you be so rude to a guest. Becky, how did that fellow get here? Well, he came in on a cougar hunt with Cincinnatus. In fact, he saved Cincinnatus' life. I suppose that's something in his favor. Now, why do you say that? He's wanted for murder. I know. He told me. He told you? He came here looking for you. He wants your help to get to New Orleans. I suppose he also told you he's innocent. Yes, he did, and I believe him. Dan, can't you help him? Oh, you and I are going to have a little talk. Well, most folks say it's what I do the best. So you go right ahead. I figure I know what you want to talk about anyway. I ran into a detachment of King's men coming home, heading this way. They're looking for an escaped murderer. Well, they got here a little sooner than I expected. It kind of spoiled some plans I had, too. I was in hopes that if I had time that... You and I might get to be real good friends. And right now, I need a friend, Mr. Boone. There's a whole lot of Indians between here and where I'm going. And I don't know very much about Indians. Supposing we were friends, would you ask me to go against justice for you? If I were dead, I'd pay it. I reckon that's justice, and I wouldn't ask you to go against that. Do you know, was there a trial? No. Chances are there never would be. The gentleman with the warrant, Lehman Henderson, he'd make sure of that. You see, he's the one that done the killing. Henderson? That's right. I reckon if you don't believe me, you're going to try to stop me. I don't know any one man that can do that, Mr. Boone. Except maybe you. And I'm hoping you won't try. So long, Dan. Wish we'd had more time. I'm sorry, Becky. There just wasn't any other way. He's not in there, sir. Try the next one. They'd like to tore my place apart. They can't do that. Are we going to take any more of this? I say we run them out of Boonesboro. Well, why don't somebody go get Daniel Boone? He can tell us what to Cincinnati's do. Cincinnatus is already gone for him. Quiet down. Boone will be here shortly. Daniel, there's a whole bunch of British soldiers tearing up the settlement looking for Dilo. Now, somebody's going to get themselves killed. Everybody's getting mad. you got to come quick. I'll be right with you. Soldiers. Boy, is he gonna be mad when he finds out what you've done. 
most likely to bust a board over me. But I'm gonna let those British soldiers hang you. I'm gonna make that up to you one day, Israel. Couldn't you take me with you? It doesn't take long for me to get dressed. And I'm a real good traveler. <laughs> I'll bet you are. Not this time. Maybe the next time. All right, big fella. If you have any influence with these people, Mr. Boone, I'd suggest you use it. If they continue to defy duly appointed representatives of His Majesty's government. I don't see any signs of defiance, Mr. Henderson. From what I understand, it sounds more like a justified complaint. This warrant is implicit, Mr. Boone. It requires the full cooperation of everyone in the apprehension of the fugitive. So far, all I've received is sullen resistance. Well, you'll get more than that if you keep on. Daniel, you tell him to get out of Boonesboro. Yeah, Daniel. Yeah. All right, folks. Mr. Henderson, if these people wanted to resist, you wouldn't be standing there now talking about it. I want the fugitive, Boone. You people know where he is. I could consider this insurrection. Order these soldiers to open fire. Sergeant, get these people back. Come on, lads, move this crowd back. Come on, move. Come on. I wouldn't give any more orders if I were you, Mr. Henderson. I want the fugitive, Boone. And you'll hand him over to my custody or you'll suffer any consequences. He's not in Boonesboro. And these folks don't know where he is. Then suppose you tell me. I will, under one condition. If there are any conditions to be made here, Mr. Boone, I will make them. Then you're going to spend a mighty long time hunting for your man. Very well. I'll listen. I'll turn him over to you, providing he goes to Williamsburg, under escort by the sergeant and his men. You and I will stay over a day and start later. What kind of nonsense is this? It seems that Delo thinks you don't want him to live long enough to stand trial. That is preposterous. That may be. But if it isn't true, why should you object to being one day late? I find your attitude insulting, Mr. Boone. You can take it any way you like. But those are my terms. Do you know I could take you into custody for this? I don't think so. You are harboring a fugitive. I'm not harboring anybody. I'm just making sure that Delo gets a trial. In that case, I suppose I shall have to humor you. Where is Jones now? You follow me? I'll take you to him. Please do that. Sergeant, take two of your men and you'll come with me. The rest of you stay here and maintain order. I'll not have a riot on my hands. Mr. Henderson, there's no one here. What is this, Mr. Boone? Some trick to gain more time for his escape? He was still there when I left about an hour ago. Could he have escaped? Not without help. The door fastens from the outside. And just who would have helped him? Could have been my son. Then get him out here. I want to question him. I don't think I'll do that, Mr. Henderson. You see, he's only eight years old. Well, that being the case, I shall hold you responsible for his actions. Sergeant, arrest this man. Take his rifle. Yes, sir. Your gun, Mr. Boone? <laughs>
بر حالی Come close to letting daylight through you. If you don't keep quiet, the Chickasaws will do it for you. I must have come farther than I thought. Did you say Chickasaws? Yeah, they aren't raiding Shawnee villages. You'd have heard from them before now. And I thought I was covering my tracks pretty good. You were. You almost lost me at that creek you crossed back a ways. Dan, you got no call to get caught up in this. I'm grateful to you, but you are going back home. Now, you've got Henderson after you, as well as the Chickasaws. I figure any man deserves a better break than that, D'Lo. What made you change your mind, Dan? Israel. But not for the reasons you think. I can guess. I hope you didn't whip him when you found out what he'd done. I didn't have a chance. Dan, I can't let you do it. You've got a wife and a boy to think about. And I've also got the British Army after me. And that's my fault. Well, it doesn't change things one way or another. Do you know this country? No. I'm running blind. Then I'd better pick the trail. First thing we're going to do is get rid of those chickasaws. It's a long ways to New Orleans. Dan, I'll make it up to you. Somehow, somewhere, I'll make it up to you. Miss Henderson, you said he was some kind of special officer. What does that mean? Oh, he's got some kind of title and the right kind of friends. He asked for the job special, I expect, and the governor gave it to him. The man that was killed, you say Henderson killed him? Henderson had the title, but he needed money, even though everybody called him sir. And he'd lost all of his. And then there was this girl. Her daddy's money had fixed him up real good. Oh, I should have known better, but... Go on, D-Lo. Well, Henderson was afraid he's going to lose the girl. And her daddy didn't think too much of me. Everybody knew that. And we had a few words. But I left him in the library. And I heard the shot before I got to the front door. And it was Henderson that shot him, and then he blamed it on me. And the servants had heard us quarreling. I figured, who's going to believe me? Nobody, I figured. And I reckon I figured it about right. Aren't you pointing that the wrong way? If you've got any enemies, they're out there someplace. I reckon any way I'd point it, Dan, I'd be pointing at an enemy. It's all right, though. Like I said, I didn't expect anybody to believe me. I believe you, D-Lo. If you believe me, Dan, you wouldn't try to trick me. I'm not as good a woodsman as you are, but I know we've been heading east. You turned me around real good, facing west ever sun up. And I know now. You couldn't make it to New Orleans, d -Lo, even if I tried to help. Going back's the only way. You've got to clear yourself. Dan, if you meant it, it wouldn't work. I gotta tie you up and leave you here, Dan. I know the governor, D'Lo. He's a fair man. If Henderson killed that fella, he'll pay, not you. I give you my word on that. Get up, Dan. Turn around. Put your hands behind you. I didn't think you could do it. I did it once before. Yeah, but that time I was looking the other way. This time it's fair. All right. I'll go with you, Dan. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That'll make it easier on both of us. <laughs> Will 
you sure you want to go through with this? I told you before, you're not the only one they're after. like we can walk on from here. That's not what's bothering me. Just getting you to Williamsburg healthy and alive is not enough. It's still your word against Henderson's. Yeah. His and everybody else's that heard the argument before the shooting started. That's what I mean. You got something on your mind? It depends on how far you're willing to trust me. I come this far with you, ain't it? I think it's only fair to tell you that what I've got in mind is apt to get you killed. Keep talking. I stand a pretty good chance of getting hung anyhow. Now, just suppose. Sergeant! <laughs> yes, sir? Get those men on their feet. We can run them down before dark. <laughs> All right, lads, on your feet. They're heading for Williamsburg. We must stop them before they reach there. I'll double the gold I promised you if we do. My people have many names for the tall one. Some call him the wind. To catch the wind and hold it. Would a bullet stop the wind? I took will lead you to them. Your soldiers must do the rest. All right, men. Move out. Double quick. His Majesty King George III, you are hereby made a prisoner of the Crown to stand trial for the murder of one William Ferriby, Esquire. That's why I'm here, Sergeant. I want to make sure I get that trial. You understand the penalty for the crime you've committed, and your attempt to escape justice has proven your guilt. I understand the penalty for murder, Mr. Henderson, but just because I ran don't prove I'm guilty. The court will decide that. Yes, sir. I hope so. Where's your friend Boone? I want him, too. He went on to Williamsburg. Seems the governor's a real good friend of his. Uh, well, you can't be far ahead, Sergeant. You'll take Natick and your men and pursue the other fugitive. I'll follow with the prisoner. Yes, sir. I'll leave two of my men behind. But... Uh, that won't be necessary. Mark your trail well. We'll not impede the chase. Right, men. Follow me. Now, Mr. Jones, you'll turn around and move off down the trail. So you can shoot me in the back like I was trying to escape? Of course. Don't forget those soldier boys saw me come in here and give myself up. They might start asking a few questions if you showed up with a corpse. You were nearing exhaustion when you surrendered. Having rested and having but a single guard, you tried to run again. You know what? You make it sound real convincing. I can assure you it will be believed by any board of inquiry. So, I got about 
15 minutes to keep breathing, is that right? It should take about that long for the others to be out of hearing, yes. But I wouldn't attempt anything, Mr. Jones. Just turn around and walk slowly. When the end comes, it'll be swift and quite probably painless. There are worse ways to die. I understand you woodsmen can read the sun to within 30 seconds. The end will be far more pleasant if you don't go to all that trouble. Move. to get a little nervous, eh? I didn't aim to cut it so fine, d -Lo, but that night tuck wasn't too easy to throw off the track. This man is a murderer, Boone. As a loyal subject of the Crown, it is your duty to see that he's brought to justice. Now, that's not the way he tells it, Henderson. He says you're the one that did the killing. His word against mine, and I have a governor's writ to back my assertion. Do you intend to dispute that? Well, that's kind of a rough decision for one man to make. I think I'll put it into other hands. Now move. Now this will do fine. Dilo, did you ever hear about the old Indian custom where they let the great spirits decide between the guilty and the innocent? Yeah, I heard of it. What are you talking about? Well, it's a woodchuck hole, Mr. Henderson. They dig them roomy enough to accommodate almost any animal that takes to living in a burrow. Rabbits, ferrets, and sometimes even rattlesnakes. They usually uh, build them with two or three entrances, sort of a escape route. There's one right back there. Now, the Indians believe that the animals are both good and bad spirits. And that's why they let them decide in cases like this between the guilty and the innocent. This is insane. This man is a prisoner of the crown. Nobody knows what's down there, what kind of animals, what kind of spirits. Whatever it is, the Indians feel that they'll judge fairly. Dilo, I reckon we're going to give that a try. Here. Here. Boom! Boom! This is barbaric! Get me up from here in the name of His Majesty's government! If you're innocent, Henderson, you've got nothing to worry about. You're both stretched out over the escape route. Whatever's down there will start to come out once I set this on fire. You'll hang with him. I swear it. It could be a rabbit or a 
maybe a ground squirrel. On the other hand, it could be a rattlesnake or a ferret. Whatever it is, it'll be doing its best to get out. Boone! Well, it makes a lot of sense when you get to thinking about it. The guilty one knows he's guilty. He knows the most fear. Animals can smell fear. Boone! 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 Get me up! Quick! I feel something. There's something in my back. It's tearing at me. Get me up quick! Boone! The fire's hardly started, Henderson. Boone. I killed him. I killed him. Get me up! Quick! <laughs> I'll see you both hang for this. I killed Farabee, but the governor's not gonna take the word of two half-wild savages. I'll see both of you hang. I figured that's the way you'd feel about it. That, Sergeant. I heard. They, they threatened my life, Sergeant. They're madmen. I would have confessed to anything any sane man would have. Mr. Boone knew it was a rabbit burrow. You were in no danger, Henderson. And you stated again after you were freed that you killed Mr. Ferriby. I'll have to testify to what I saw and heard. Yeah. I'll place Mr. Henderson in custody, Mr. Boone. I expect the trial will be a brief one. Want me to go the rest of the way with you, D-Lo? <laughs> oh, I reckon not, Dan. I imagine you better get on home. Well, then I'll say goodbye for now. If you ever decide to go to New Orleans again, be sure to stop off in Bloomsboro. When I come to Boonesboro the next time, it won't be because I'm headed somewhere else. Huh? I got a girl in the Sarwood Mountains, oh, the young, the idiom day. So many pretty girls, I can count them, oh, the young, the idiom day. I got a girl that lives in the holler, oh, the young, the idiom day. She won't come and I won't call her, oh, the young, the idiom day. Say, old oh, man, I want your daughter, oh, the young, the idiom day. To wash my clothes and carry my water, oh, the young, the idiom day. cat all hunkered up and I figured I better... We have been chasing that cat for two days and nights. Now you made the whole thing a big waste of time. Oh, I saw the two of you over there. I don't know where you're from, but around here a man don't come in on another man's kill. Especially if you can't shoot no better than you can. <laughs> well, where I'm from, sir, uh, you don't take on to a feller quite so fierce. Unless, of course, you got no manners. In which case, somebody generally teaches you some. 
course, you being a little older than I am, I reckon I can't even do that. Well, just you forget about my age and put up your fists, because I'm going to teach you who's going to show who's the menace right now! Now, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Stay out of this! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Can't even fight me! Look, that lion's been killing livestock around here. Two days ago, he mauled a young boy pretty bad. It's the first time anyone's had a chance to get a shot at it. That's right. Well, I, I can understand why you're mad, and I'm sorry that I spoiled your hunt, but... My name is Moss. Calvin Moss. Howdy. This gentleman here who intends teaching you some manners is Cincinnatus. I'd have had that cat right between the eyes, and it hadn't been for you and that... I sort of doubt that. You mean to say you're questioning my marksmanship? <laughs> no, how can I do that? I haven't even seen you shoot. It's just that... Come here. I saw you two back there. And I didn't think you saw that cat. And it was all set to jump. Well, I uh, expect we uh, <clears throat> got a little apologizing to do, Mr. Jones. D'Lo Jones. D'Lo, I owe you some thanks. <laughs> yeah. See, we never even suspected that cat might have had a mate. I told you we should have waited till Daniel got back before we went on a hunt. I know. It. Had it been for Delo here, the two of us might have got ourselves killed. This Daniel, this Daniel you're talking about, that wouldn't be Daniel Boone, would it? You know Daniel. <laughs> oh, sir, but I'd sure be proud to meet him sometime. Reckon that could be arranged. All we got to do is just come back to Boonesboro with Cal and me, and I tell you, you'd be mighty welcome. Why, sure. I'm just going to take you up on that. I was headed for there anyhow. Ooh, plan to settle down there for a spell, huh? Well, uh, that all depends. I might have to leave most any time. But if I stay around, we'll try to get that other cat. Good idea. Hey, hold on till I get my gear, all right? Pack of trade goods I brought from Virginia with me. You go right ahead and keep it. It's all yours. Hey, Cincinnati, since you're going over to the Boons, mind if I tag along with you? I've been looking forward to meeting him for a long time. Be real glad to have you. Yeah. I respect Mrs. Boone would like to meet you, too. So why don't you come along? Come on. Say, that's something. Hello, Cincinnati. Howdy, Becky. I take it uh, Dan ain't back from Salem yet. <laughs> no, he's not. I'm expecting him any time. Was it something important? Oh, nothing special. Uh... Mr. Jones here would like to meet Daniel. Uh, by the way, D'Lo, uh, this is Rebecca Boone, Daniel's wife. How do you do? My pleasure, ma'am. Won't you come in? Well, I reckon we could set a spell if it won't put you out none. Nonsense. I'm grateful for the company. It gets awfully lonely when Dan's gone. Come along, Israel. <laughs> Sit down and make yourselves comfortable. I'll get some cool cider. Will you sing a song for me, D'Lo? I don't know. Your mama might not like that. Oh, she'll like it fine. She don't get to hear music very often. What do you think? Sure. You know, every time we have a dance, what, Becky's apt to be the last one to leave. Just, just listen to the music. What are you going to sing for us? Well, now I know you heard the story about the handsome young soldier and the pretty little girl in Caroline. I ain't heard it. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe that a man could do what he did, especially with her looking up at him and asking just one question. What was the question, D'Lo? Oh, soldier, soldier, will you marry me with your musket, fife, and drum? Now, how can I marry such a pretty girl as ye when I got no pants to put on? So off to the tailor she did go as fast as she could run. She bought him a pair of the best that were there, and the soldier put them on. Now, soldier, soldier, will you marry me with your musket, fife, and drum? Now, how can I marry such a pretty girl as you when I got no boots to put on? 
So off to the cobbler she did go as fast as she could run. She bought him a pair of the best that were there, and the soldier put them on. Oh, soldier, soldier, will you marry me with your musket, fife, and drum? Now, how can I marry such a pretty gal as ye? With a wife and a baby at home. They might start asking a few questions if you showed up with a corpse. You were nearing exhaustion when you surrendered. Having rested and having but a single guard, you tried to run again. You know what? You make it sound real convincing. I can assure you it will be believed by any board of inquiry. So, I got about 15 minutes to keep breathing, is that right? It should take about that long for the others to be out of hearing, yes. But I wouldn't attempt anything, Mr. Jones. Just turn around and walk slowly. When the end comes, it'll be swift and quite probably painless. There are worse ways to die. I understand you woodsmen can read the sun to within 30 seconds. The end will be far more pleasant if you don't go to all that trouble. Move. to get a little nervous, there. I didn't aim to cut it so fine, D-Lo, but that night tuck wasn't too easy to throw off the track. This man is a murderer, Boone. As a loyal subject of the Crown, it is your duty to see that he's brought to justice. Now, that's not the way he... So you can shoot me in the back like I was trying to escape? Of course. Don't forget those soldier boys saw me come in here and give myself up. They might start asking a few questions if you showed up with a corpse. You were nearing exhaustion when you surrendered. Having rested and having but a single guard, you tried to run again. You know what? You make it sound real convincing. I can assure you it will be believed by any board of inquiry. So, I got about 15 minutes to keep breathing, is that right? It should take about that long for the others to be out of hearing, yes. But I wouldn't attempt anything, Mr. Jones. Just turn around and walk slowly. When the end comes, it'll be swift and quite probably painless. There are worse ways to die. I understand you woodsmen can read the sun to within 30 seconds. The end will be far more pleasant if you don't go to all that trouble. Move.
I think you're smart enough to know that if I wanted to kill you, you'd be dead already. I'm going to have to turn you loose in order to gag you. If you try to yell, it's going to be a short last word, you understand? Began to get a little nervous, eh? Well, I didn't. Whatever it is, it'll be doing its best to get out. Uh, Boone! Well, it makes a lot of sense when you get to thinking about it. The guilty one knows he's guilty. He knows the most fear. Animals can smell fear. Boone! Ah, Boone! Boone! Get me up! Quick! I feel so. There's something in my back. Ah, it's tearing at me. Get me up quick. No. Boone. The fire's hardly started, Henderson. Boone. I killed him. I killed him. Get me up quick. Ah. Hurry. Oh, hurry. back. I'll see you both hang for this. I killed Farabee, but the governor's not going to take the word of two half-wild savages. I'll see both of you hang. I figured that's the way you'd feel about it. That, Sergeant. I heard. They, they threatened my life, Sergeant. They're madmen. I would have confessed to anything any sane man would have. Mr. Boone knew it was a rabbit burrow. You were in no danger, Henderson. And you stated again after you were freed that you killed Mr. Ferriby. I'll have to testify to what I saw and heard. You. Yeah. I'll place Mr. Henderson in custody, Mr. Boone. I expect the trial will be a brief one. Want me to go the rest of the way with you, D-Lo? <laughs> no, I reckon not, Dan. I imagine you better get on home. Well, then I'll say goodbye for now. If you ever decide to go to New Orleans again, be sure to stop off in Bloomsboro. When I come to Boonesboro the next time, it won't be because I'm headed somewhere else. I got a girl in the Sourwood Mountains, hodium, oh, idiom day. So many pretty girls, I can count them, hodium, oh, idiom day. I got a girl that... Having rested and having but a single guard, you tried to run again. You know what? You make it sound real convincing. I can assure you it will be believed by any board of inquiry. So, I got about 15 minutes to keep breathing, is that right? It should take about that long for the others to be out of hearing, yes. But I wouldn't attempt anything, Mr. Jones. Just turn around and walk slowly. When the end comes, it'll be swift and quite probably painless. There are worse ways to die. I understand you woodsmen can read the sun to within 30 seconds. The end will be far more pleasant if you don't go to all that trouble. Move.
kill you, you'd be dead already. I'm gonna have to turn you loose in order to gag you. If you try to yell, it's gonna be a short last word, you understand? Eh? Well, I didn't aim to cut it so fine, D-Lo, but that night tuck wasn't too easy to throw off the track. This man is a murderer, Boone. As a loyal subject of the Crown, it is your duty to see that he's brought to justice. Now, that's not the way he tells it, Henderson. He says you're the one that did the killing. His word against mine, and I have a governor's writ to back my assault. <laughs> <laughs> You know something, Dale? I didn't think you could do it. I did it once before. Yeah, but that time I was looking the other way. This time it's fair. All right. I'll go with you, Dale. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That'll make it easier on both of us. Are you sure you want to go through with it? I told you before, you're not the only one they're after. like we can walk on from here. That's not what's bothering me. Just getting you to Williamsburg healthy and alive is not enough. It's still your word against Henderson's. Yeah. His and everybody else's that heard the argument before the shooting started. That's what I mean. You got something on your mind? It depends on how far you're willing to trust me. I come this far with you, ain't it? I think it's only fair to tell you that what I've got in mind is apt to get you killed. Keep talking. I stand a pretty good chance of getting hung anyhow. Now, just suppose. Sergeant! <laughs> yes, sir? Get those men on their feet. We can run them down before dark. <laughs> Right, lads. On your feet. They're heading for Williamsburg. We must stop them before they reach there. I'll double the gold I promised you if we do. My people have many names for the tall one. Some call him the wind. To catch the wind and hold it. Would a bullet stop the wind? Bust a board over me, but I ain't gonna let those British soldiers hang you. I'm gonna make that up to you one day, Israel. 
couldn't you take me with you? It doesn't take long for me to get dressed. And I'm a real good traveler. <laughs> I'll bet you are. Not this time. Maybe the next time. All right, big fella. If you have any influence with these people, Mr. Boone, I'd suggest you use it. If they continue to defy duly appointed representatives of His Majesty's government. I don't see any signs of defiance, Mr. Henderson. From what I understand, it sounds more like a justified complaint. This warrant is implicit, Mr. Boone. It requires the full cooperation of everyone in the apprehension of the fugitive. So far, all I've received is sullen resistance. So you'll get more than that if you keep on. Daniel, you tell him to get out of Boonesboro. Yeah, Daniel. Yeah. All right, folks. Mr. Henderson, if these people wanted to resist, you wouldn't be standing there now talking about it. I want the fugitive, Boone. You people know where he is. I could consider this insurrection. Order these soldiers to open fire. Sergeant, get these people back. Come on, lads. Move this crowd back. Come on, move. Fuck. I wouldn't give any more orders if I were you, Mr. Henderson. I want the fugitive, Boone. And you'll hand him over to my custody or you'll suffer any consequences. He's not in Boonesboro. And these folks don't know where he is. Then suppose you tell me. I will. Under one condition. If there are any conditions to be made here, Mr. Boone, I will make them. Then you're going to spend a mighty long time hunting for your man. Very well. I'll listen. The guilty one knows he's guilty. He knows the most fear. Animals can smell fear. Boone! Boone! Get me up! Quick! I feel something. There's something in my back. It's tearing at me. Get me up quick! Boone! The fire's hardly started, Henderson. I killed him. I killed him. Get me up! Quick! Hurry! Oh, hurry! back. I'll see you both hang for this. I killed Farabee, but the governor is not going to take the word of two half-wild savages. I'll see both of you hang. I figured that's the way you'd feel about it. that, Sergeant? I heard. They, they threatened my life, Sergeant. They're madmen. I would have confessed to anything any sane man would have. Mr. Boone knew it was a rabbit burrow. You were in no danger, Henderson. And you stated again after you were freed that you killed Mr. Ferriby. I'll have to testify to what I saw and heard. You! Yeah. I'll place Mr. Henderson in custody, Mr. Boone. I expect the trial will be a brief one. Want me to go the rest of the way with you, D-Lo? <laughs> oh, I reckon not, Dan. I imagine you better get on home. Well, then I'll say goodbye for now. If you ever decide to go to New Orleans again, be sure and stop off in Bloomsboro. When I come to Boonesboro the next time, it won't be because I'm headed somewhere else. I got a girl in the Sarwood Mountains, oh, the yum, yiddy, yum, day. 
So many pretty girls, I can't count them. Hodium, oh, the idiom day. I got a girl that lives in the holler. Hodium, oh, the idiom day. She won't come and I won't call her. Hodium, oh, the idiom day. Hey, up. Quick, I feel something. There's something in my back. Ah, it's tearing at me. Get me up quick. <laughs> Boone. The fire's hardly started, Henderson. Boone. I killed him. I killed him. Get me up. Quick! <laughs> 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 I'll see you both hang for this. I killed Farabee, but the governor's not gonna take the word of two half-wild savages. I'll see both of you hang. I figured that's the way you'd feel about it. Sergeant? I heard. They, they threatened my life, Sergeant. They're madmen. I would have confessed to anything any sane man would have. Mr. Boone knew it was a rabbit burrow. You were in no danger, Henderson. And you stated again after you were freed that you killed Mr. Ferriby. I'll have to testify to what I saw and heard. Yeah. I'll place Mr. Henderson in custody, Mr. Boone. I expect the trial will be a brief one. Want me to go the rest of the way with you, D-Lo? <laughs> oh, I reckon not, now. I imagine you better get on home. Well, then I'll say goodbye for now. If you ever decide to go to New Orleans again, be sure and stop off in Bloomsboro. When I come to Boonesboro the next time, it won't be because I'm headed somewhere else. I got a girl in the Sourwood Mountains, Odium, oh, the idiom day. So many pretty girls, I can't count them, Odium, oh, the idiom day. I got a girl that lives in the holler, Odium, oh, the idiom day. She won't come and I won't call her, Odium, oh, the idiom day. Say, old man, I want your daughter, Odium, oh, the idiom day. To wash my clothes and carry my water, Odium, oh, the idiom day. What kind of animals, what kind of spirits, whatever it is, the Indians feel that they'll judge fairly. And D'Lo, I reckon we're going to give that a try. Here. Here. Boom! Um, uh, boom! <clears throat> That's just barbaric! Get me up from here in the name of His Majesty's government! You're Henderson. Henderson, you've got nothing to worry about. You're both stretched out over the escape route. Whatever's down there will start to come out once I set this on fire. You'll hang with him. I swear it. It could be a rabbit or a, maybe a ground squirrel. On the other hand, it could be a rattlesnake or a fairy. <laughs> Whatever it is, it'll be doing its best to get out. Boone! Well, it makes a lot of sense when you get to thinking about it. The guilty one knows he's guilty. He knows the most fear. Animals can smell fear. Boone! Ah, Boone! Boone, get me up! Quick! I feel something. There's something in my back. Ah, it's tearing at me. Get me up, quick! Boone! The fire's hardly started, Henderson. Boone. I killed him. I killed him. Get me up. Quick! <laughs> Hurry! Oh, hurry!
cannot be back. I'll see you both hang for this. I killed Farabee, but the governor is not going to take the word of two half-wild savages. I'll see both of you hang. I figured that's the way you'd feel about it. You heard all of that, Sergeant. I heard. They, they threatened my life, Sergeant. They're madmen. I would have confessed to anything any sane man would have. Mr. Boone knew it was a rabbit burrow. You were in no danger, Henderson. And you stated again after you were freed that you killed Mr. Ferriby. I'll have to testify to what I saw and heard. You! Yeah. I'll place Mr. Hayes. The rest of you stay here and maintain order. I'll not have a riot on my hands. Mr. Henderson, there's no one here. What is this, Mr. Boone? Some trick to gain more time for his escape? He was still there when I left about an hour ago. Could he have escaped? Not without help. The door fastens from the outside. And just who would have helped him? Could have been my son. Then get him out here. I want to question him. I don't think I'll do that, Mr. Henderson. You see, he's only eight years old. Well, that being the case, I shall hold you responsible for his actions. Sergeant, arrest this man. Take his rifle. Yes, sir. Your gun, Mr. Boone? <laughs> to letting daylight through you. If you don't keep quiet, the chickasaws will do it for you. I must have come farther than I 